Welcome to the CBS Chicago special presentation, Chicago Decides. I'm Erica Sargent. It is one week away from the polls. Voters will go to the polls and select city leaders for the next four years. It's a crowded field for mayor. Nine candidates are battling it out, including the incumbent, Lori Lightfoot. Joining us once again to discuss the candidates and the key issues is Alderman Leslie Harrison, who has decided not to run again. But thankfully, that means we are thrilled to have you with us for election season. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, it's been a busy couple of days in terms of these candidates, so let's get right to it. Mayor Lori Lightfoot causing some controversy over the weekend, telling Southside voters to stay home and not vote if they were not going to vote for her. And she specifically talked about Jesus Chuy Garcia and Paul Vallis. And then yesterday, when we brought this to her attention and many others did, she said she, quote, misspoke. So what effect do you think that might that comment might have on the election for Mayor Lightfoot? Well, I think there were a couple of things that, that, that happened here. I mean, let's, let's not just talk about um, the, the historics of it all. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that black people fought and died for the right to vote. Um, looking at uh, the United States and the elections over the past 20 years, mm -hmm. past 15 years, um, how important the right to uh, the the right to vote has been. Um, just looking at that, that is um, that that's a that's a horrible. Uh, reflection on somebody that represents a city uh, that is comprised of black and brown people. Uh, the other part I would say is that, you know, sometimes as a politician, people, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when you make a mistake, own it. Say mea culpa. Do not turn it on the receivers of the message. And so I think at first, uh, there was no comment from her campaign, then there was some other comment, then there was a statement, and then today I heard the thing, and that might have been from last night, but I heard this if, mm -hmm. and that was very troubling to me, because then that turns it upon the, the viewer or the listener to say, well, if you heard it that way, you were wrong as opposed to, I made a mistake in what I said. That goes to the point that a lot of people bring up that if I offended you, I am sorry. Is that a non-apology? And in this that case, is a non-apology. Yeah, yeah, that is a non-apology, and and that's just unacceptable. If we talk about this field of nine candidates, black vote will be split for black voters. For any voter to hear that from a black. Uh, incumbent mayor to hear it from a black candidate what do you think that impact will be for them well i think the impact from any candidate to try to stop somebody from voting to discourage people from voting and even if you come back and say well that's not what i meant but that's what you said mm -hmm. and without you saying i i made a mistake um you know especially here in chicago especially during um, you know, she was a, a historic mayor. She was the first uh, openly gay mayor. She was the first black woman mayor. And now telling people not to vote, that's a problem. If we look at the two candidates, Jesus Chuy Garcia and Paul Vallis, what she claimed she was trying to say was that anyone voting for one of the other six black candidates would help either of them and not get elected the person that they intend. What do you think of that? I, I think that's crazy, man. Okay. Um, you know, and, 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 and here's why I say that. If you go back four years ago, uh, someone by the name of Lori Lightfoot was not polling well, was only getting 1%, uh, you know, was on nobody's radar, nobody was talking about her. They were talking about whoever else was in there and the polls were showing that there was going to be, you know, one candidate that stood out over everybody else mm -hmm. and that was not the case. And so I think we should take that as a lesson. And so it's still too early because each time there's an opportunity, somebody says or does something. And so we've got, you know, we still got a good week mm -hmm. to see what else happens. Okay, let's turn to Paul Vallis because, you know, he has the support of the FOP. Yes. Governor Ron DeSantis from Florida was in town, and Paul Vallis spoke out about how he said that he does not agree with the FOP bringing him in because he's, quote, a right-wing extremist. But what do you think the impact could be visually for voters to see that an organization that's standing behind Vallis is also bringing in governors like this? Well, as you know, as you know, Chicago, and, and you know um, the... 
the way that the police department is. I think it's done intentionally mm -hmm. to try to influence people one way or another. And I think people are going to be focusing on the city of Chicago, the things that need to happen in the city of Chicago, um, and not on somebody that really has nothing to do with what we do here in the city of Chicago. Okay. Uh, there was, I believe, a quote from Vallis where he was trying to distinguish between the leader of the FLP, who is definitely a lightning rod, and saying that he really represents the rank and file. Do you think that's believable to voters? Well, considering the source mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and looking at the head of the FOP, yes, that is a, a lightning rod. Um, you know, but, but we as individuals are not, you know, if somebody comes in and I happen to know them and they're supporting me does not mean that I associate the same values that they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I might have done things a little bit different, uh, but uh, surely, you know, it's guilt by association. And so I think we'll just have to let the voters decide that. Okay. So an, a long-serving alderman, you've been there through many mayors. Yes. What advice would you give to our current mayor if she wants to get reelected just a week out from Election Day? I think I would say uh, focus on what you've done. I would say speak the truth mm -hmm. and own it. When you make a mistake, own it. All right. That's what I would say. What do you think the chances are that any of the nine would drop out at this point? Do you see that happening? I do not see that happening. Okay. But, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll wait to see. Um, you know, a week out, it doesn't look like anybody's going to get out. Um, and we're going to see what happens after the 28th. Okay. And then see who aligns where, because that's when the real... A uh, fight is going to begin, if you will. So I know, like you said, I at this point, a lot of people can't even nail down like the top five, top four. You can't. Can't. But do you think of all the candidates, there are a couple that we definitely will see towards the top of that? I, I, I don't know who they will be. Okay. Yes, there will be some, and um, there. But, but I think we're going to see a lot of surprises. What we're seeing now that we didn't see four years ago, we've got higher voter turnout. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember last four years ago, it was only 30% turnout. We're way ahead, ahead of where we were four years ago. So I think it's still anybody's ball game right now. So I'm starting to see more ads, specifically Sophia King, and I understand from last week that right. you seemed excited about her. Standing where we are right now, where do you think she is falling? At least, how is she doing, do you think, in these final pushes to get voters? Well, I've, I've seen her about. She's, mm -hmm. you know, doing all of the debates. Um, all of the ones that you don't talk about in the, in the mayoral race are, are, are making their way. They're doing the work. They're reaching out to the people. They're reaching out to the organizations. They're speaking at churches. They're speaking at debates. They're speaking at town hall meetings. They're getting out. I mean, I, and, 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 and so I know that you have to have money in order to run a campaign. But I also say that those that are the most visible are the ones with the most money. And I, I went through and did a little research on, you know, where their sources were. Okay. And they're very small sources. So they're either self-funded or part of an organization that they're with. It's not a, a, a compliment of, you know, we've got somebody from the east, somebody from the west, somebody from the north, and somebody from the south. Um, and so I think that's very unique and that's very telling. I think that's the first time I've seen that. Okay. So our political investigator, Dana Koslov, she's been doing uh, one-on-ones with each of the candidates. Yes. And she asked some very pointed questions of a couple of them, one of them being Cam Buckner. You know, with the history that he has, unfortunately, with uh, DWIs. Yes. And he is at a very interesting point where he's still serving out some of that probation. To have that hanging over his head at this point, do you think that that matters to voters or do you think that they're focused on something else? Well, I think that voters aren't focused on something else. Okay. I mean, we are all human. We all have faults. Um, we all make mistakes. Um, and one of the things that I've seen in the city of Chicago with the people of Chicago, that they're very forgiving. Uh, does that mean that he um, is ready to make this mayoral bid? I think that's a question that they're going to have to answer. Uh, you know, should he have waited? Should he have finished? Uh, that's a question that the voters are going to have to answer.
Okay. And Brandon Johnson, mm -hmm. when you talk about money, you know, and you've brought this up before, he has the backing of the teachers, teachers union. Uh, I'll, we've seen his ads for weeks and weeks yes. now. But uh, a lot of times when we ask him questions, you know, specifics on his plan, we're not getting very specific answers. Do you think that that applies across the board or do you think that uh, there are certain candidates where you have a good idea of what their plan is for if they were to get into this role as mayor? Uh, there are certain candidates that do have an idea mm -hmm. of what they would do. Those are not the ones that you're seeing okay. uh, all the time with, with the big money. Um, you know, I know Brandon. I work with Brandon. Um, I like Brandon. Um, but, you know, in order to do this job, you've got to be ready. And it's more than just having, I think, very good commercials. Um, and so we'll see what the voters say. All right, let's turn to some of the issues. Are there any one or two that you see as top of mind for voters right now, a week out. So what do you mean top of mind? Um, you know, of course, Vallis, and many of them are running on public safety. What will we do differently to keep the, the well, city safe? Well, I think safe? all of them are running on public right, safety. Right, but is there anything else that you think perhaps maybe they're missing? If we if we set aside that big issue, something else that's really important to voters well, right Well, I now. think what's important to, to voters are cost of living. Mm -hmm. um, the, the economy, I think their neighborhoods are important. What's happening in their neighborhoods? You know, I think they're interested in their city services. Um, you know, so these are things, when we talk about investment, you have to look at the city as a whole, right? And if we look and we, everybody talks about the disinvestment in the south and west sides, and that has happened over a quarter of a century now. And so then when we look at the population, you have to look, at least I look at the bigger picture. What does this mean for the city five years from now? What does this mean for the city 10 years from now? And what does the demographics of the city look like? What do these neighborhoods look like? And so we have to play chess instead of checkers. Okay. From a still sitting alderman right now, if we talk about power and change, what do you think in our current state, 2023 matters more, the power of the city council or the power of the mayor? I think you have to have the power of city council. Um, what we've seen over the past four years has been the power of the mayor and not a working relationship, not a good working relationship with the council, which is the reason I think that you see a lot of people leaving, a lot of people uh, making endorsements. I see that uh, Anjanette Young today uh, endorsed Brandon Johnson. Um, so I think that uh, you have to have a council. It cannot just be one person rule. Um, and even though city council was set up to be strong council, weak mayor, uh, I don't think anybody can say that it was truly that mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of council members were uh, loyal to different administrations. Uh, this one being no different, but I think the difference is, is in this one, there has not been the working relationship with the alderman, the recognition of the position of alderman, or either the understanding of what the role is and how the two work together. And I think that most people that run for office do so with good intentions, that want to see improvements in their neighborhood, want to see transparency, want to see their communities thriving, and try to do that. And they should not be prevented from doing that because someone wants to take all the power and all the credit. Okay, so last question for you, just going off of that, based off of the field of nine right now, I mean, we know where Mary, Mayor Lori Lightfoot stands in terms of her clashing at times with the council. Are there certain candidates that you see already that you believe would make a good fit with the council in terms of acknowledging the power that the council holds, not uh, clashing perhaps as much? Are there well, a couple you know, of key let me, let me just say, there's no prob problem with clashing, okay. you know, because people are not always going to agree. Right. But when you, it becomes nasty, when it becomes mean, when it is not about the issue but about the ego, mm -hmm. then that's when there needs to be a check, right? Um, and so looking at all the candidates, I, I only see two, possibly three, that would, that, that would not, that would still continue. That would continue what you've seen for the last four years. Right. And, I, and so that... Any names that, you want to give no, out? No, I'm not giving any okay. names. But, but, but you know, okay. I will say that 
the ones that are not the front runners, mm -hmm. those are the ones that know how to work and play nicely together. Okay. I think we can read into that enough to understand where who you think might. Okay. All right. Well, Alderman Harrison, as always, thank you for joining us. We will be seeing you February 28th on Tuesday for Election Day. Many hours of great oh, wow. coverage. Election Day? Really? Yes. Oh. It's just about here. All right. So thank you for that. Uh, your insights were, you know, as always, very much appreciated. Thank you. I'm Erica Sargent. Stay with CBS Chicago for coverage leading up to the election and on election night. Again, that is February 28th. In addition to our newscasts on television, you'll find information on our website at cbschicago.com and on our digital streaming network, CBS News Chicago.